Ow. Yep, that's me. What are the chances? While mowing the yard, I bumped right into an overhanging branch that this guy was on and got stuck with his venomous spines. Here are the fascinating facts. This is the southern flannel moth, still in his larval caterpillar stage. Most often, if I get stung by a bee while cutting the grass, I can keep going while trying to rub away the pain, but this time made me stop. When I got inside, I could see in the reflection of the mirror something got me good, but it didn't look like a bee sting, so it just left me confused. When I got back to the lawnmower, I spotted this gorgeous caterpillar on the back of my seat and thought he was so awesome. I contained him in an aquarium with sticks and leaves until after I finished the yard and I could take a good look at him. After I finished the yard and took a shower, I was looking up on the computer what he was and after a minute of reading I muttered, Oh my god, it was him! I connected the dots. I had run into him on that branch. He spiked me and landed on the back of me or in the back of the chair. And that's why I saw him crawling up the back of the seat. I had no idea a caterpillar could do this to someone. I was absolutely going to let him go the next day. And incredibly enough, overnight, he already started making a cocoon. I kept him on the front porch so he could continue his adventure. Well, as you can see, I got quite the introduction to the most venomous caterpillar in North America. When a pussed caterpillar rubs or is pressed against on a person's skin, its venomous hairs are embedded, causing intense burning or sometimes a rash. As for myself, I thought it was stung by a bee or bitten by a hornet or something. The pain subsides within a few hours. Occasionally, depending on the person, the reaction can be more severe, causing swelling, nausea, headaches, low blood pressure. The severity of the sting varies also with the thickness of the skin where the sting occurs. The burning pain is followed by the appearance of a red grid-like pattern on the skin that matches the pattern of the venomous spines on the caterpillar. It goes by a few different names including a, a tree asp, fire caterpillar, a woolly slug, uh, a possum bug, there's a few. They're mainly found from the east coast, Florida up to New Jersey, and west to Arkansas and Texas. The southern flannel moth has two broods per year, early summer and a second time in the fall. Female moths usually mate the night of emergence and lay their eggs during the first two nights following mating. Eggs are laid on foliage or small twigs and are covered with hair from the underside of the abdomen of the female and hatch in six to eight days. As larvae and caterpillars, they are leaf eaters. They're common on various species of oaks, elms, maples, hackberries, hollies, and sycamores. They'll be in the larva caterpillar stage for about six weeks. After that, the mature larvae will begin to spin their cocoons by making a thin framework of silk around them using their hairy covering as the supporting framework. After the outer layer of silk is laid down, the larvae remove the soft hairs from their bodies and pack it into the hump at the top of the cocoon and then add another inner layer to the cocoon. If they're of the first generation in the spring, They'll pupate 16 days after completing the cocoon and emerge as the southern flannel moth two weeks later. If they're of the fall generation, they will overwinter as larvae and pupate in late spring of the following year. Well, they're beautiful as a caterpillar and a moth. And I guess I should be honored because they're kind of rare. I've never seen one before. And I guess I don't mind being stung by one if it means that I get to share all this information with you guys and what to look out for. Hopefully you will never have to f experience that pain for those few hours. So make sure to watch out for them in the spring and fall. Take care.